Good evening, everyone. Welcome again to this Bible study hour. As we get into God's Word today and see what He's going to tell us. And like I've stated before, I know it's going to be great because it always is. And it's God's Word and it's the truth, the only truth we have. And it's the truth that we can stand on and depend on. Our most kind, gracious Heavenly Father. It's again we come to you, Lord, to thank you for another opportunity, another chance to sit down and get in your word just a little while. And I pray, O oh Lord, today you reach down and fill every listener with uh, your Holy Spirit that they can feel it bubbling over and let the Spirit catch from breast to breast that overflows and to everyone that's around them. And Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, you talk to our hearts through this word and help us, Lord, to understand. And Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, you anoint these lips of clay and give us a wisdom to speak your words with understanding that will give us all a stronger desire to follow you in your word because, Lord, we know your word is the only word that's going to lead us on the right road and it is the word and it is the truth and it's the truth we must stand on and it will stand firm until the end and all the way through because lord jesus we know you are the living word from the beginning to end and i pray also if anyone lost today that hears this video this will be the day to get saved if there's someone just straight away i pray oh lord this will be the day that they'll come back to you and start their work over and repent and start helping the others to share your gospel to the lost and dying world and we won't forget to give you the praise for it all in jesus holy and wonderful name we pray and ask it amen and thank you father one more time for your love and your mercy today we're going to be reading talking about a place that is called hell yes hell is very very real and it is very hot I know there are a lot of people today don't want the, that word mentioned whatsoever, and it's very few preachers today will preach on it and how hot it is. But my friend, it's a very hot place. It's just as hot today as it was when the rich man ended up there that, that denied Lazarus what he needed, my friend. But when he waked up there, he knew then it was too late. And my friend, that all the money in the world cannot save a lost soul. It takes the love and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and His forgiveness to forgive us of our sin and save us. Not the money, my friend, no, no way. But the love of the Lord Jesus Christ that He has for us. And let me tell you, my friends, without the love of Jesus, my friend, we will never make it We because we're not good enough. We can't work it out. My friend, it's given to us by the grace and mercy of God. Now we're going to begin reading in ch chapter 16 of St. Luke's Gospel. It's going to be talking about the rich man and Lazarus. But I want us to pay a very, very close attention to what it reads here. And it don't make no difference what people say about me. I'm still going to stay with God's Word regardless, my friend, because I know the Word of God is sure and steadfast and forever will be. There, going to, uh, chapter 16, great book of Luke. King James Version Bible, and we're going to start reading at verse 19. And there was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. In other words, anything he might have wanted in life, food-wise or clothing or whatever, he could get it because he's wealthy enough to get it. He didn't even have to wish for it. He just he could just go and get it and buy it and have it. But yet there's one thing he liked that he didn't have. And there was a and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores, 
and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. My friend, this poor man, uh, Lazarus, he would have been satisfied with the crumbs. Although the rich man had the best there was, he would have been satisfied with just the crumbs that fell from the table. They might drop on the floor, but no, uh, La uh, the rich man, he didn't have enough love for Lazarus to even share the crumbs on his, that it would have fell to the floor. My friend today, uh, Lazarus didn't ask for much, my friend. But listen, when when the rich man lifted his eyes up in hell, all he wanted was a drop of water. My, all he asked for was a drop of water, my friend. That water still hasn't come to him yet, and it never will, my friend. Today, let's take a good look at this word and see what hell really is. I know some people today they laugh at the word. They say there's no such thing, but my friend, one day they, are, they will find out for sure beyond any shadow of a doubt that hell is real and it is very, very hot, my friend, and it will be for eternity. As long as eternity rolls, it will be hot forevermore, my friend. Listen to what it's going on to say now. And desiring to be fed. 21, and desire to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dog came and licked his sores. The dog showed love to Lazarus that the rich man didn't have. They even licked his sores. Now, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel unto Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Notice here also in verse 22 that when Lazarus died, the angels become his pallbearers. They carried him to Abraham's bosom to the safest place, away from harm and danger. He would never have to suffer again. He would never have to beg for a piece of bread, my friend, because it's always room in God's kingdom and God's glory. I, I for those that have have nothing. Those that have nothing, there's room for them, and they would never more ever beg for something to eat, because God will take care of his own, his children, when they get home, and they will never suffer again. My friend, today, therefore let us rejoice and be glad, and thank God of heaven that we are saved by his grace, and we are a child of God, and on our way home to heaven, one day after a while, when this life is over, but let us never Ever get over excited with ourselves and think we're better than anyone else because we're not because we're all sinners saved by the grace of God my friend today therefore we know better than a sinner we're only we're just saved and they're not that's the only difference but my friend God loves them the Lord loves the sinner as much as he loves you and I therefore let us not be get carried away the thinking we're so good that we can't do nothing wrong but now let's get back into the God's Word. Verse 23. And, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was, was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now, the, that Lazarus, the beggar, when I call a beggar, he just, he didn't have nothing. He begged for the crumb. He would have been happy for the crumb that fell from the rich man's table. But the rich man said no. But now, 
Now when this rich man lifted his eyes up in hell in the flame, all he want he asked for a little water, my friend, but it was no water came. Now there now his riches didn't matter to him anymore, my friend, because they were all gone with him. My friend today, do not let riches come between us and God. It's not a saying if you're rich you can't get to heaven. No, it's not saying that at all, because God blessed many of his followers to be rich, but they didn't let the money come between them and God and between them and their brother. They will reach out to those that are in need around them and help them along my friend today and they will be blessed by my friend today because they got banks full of money that don't mean they're right with God because they can be the richest man on earth and still be the poorest man because they're not saved by the grace of God they're worse off than the man that never had a dime and they're never poor they're poorer than he was because the poor man if he is saved. He's got an eternal home in heaven. I'd reach it beyond any man's expectation. But my friend, and they would never pass away, but the riches of this world that we gain in this world are going to vanish or pass away and be burned one day after a while. But but the, it says the canker of them will eat our flesh as it were fire. He also said they were heaping treasures again, again them for the last days. My friend, Friend, let's love God. Let's seek to love Him and please Him. Let us be sharing this gospel to the lost and dying world and trying to get lost to come in to be saved and get those straight away. Come back to Him that we all labor together in God's vineyard on this earth trying to win souls to the Lord Jesus Christ and t take them, get them out of the devil's hand, my friend, by telling the good news of the gospel gospel that what the, the the price that Jesus paid for them on the cross and how he loved them and he still loves them he's still pleading to whosoever will let him come unto him and be saved his arms are outstretched still even when he died on an old rugged cross when he stretched out his arms and they drove his nails in his hands and when they drove the nails in his feet the love he had for us was what kept him there it was the nails because he called ten legions, a thousand of angels, to come and set him free. But no, he chose to die that death, that we could be saved, and that we might live one day after a while. Therefore, don't let the riches come between us and God. Verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. He was also tormented by the shame that he felt, the shame he had that he didn't. I give this 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 bigger Lazarus I have something to eat my friend he felt ashamed my friend he burned with his own shame because he knew what he'd done but now he was in a place he could no longer make it right and he was now being tormented and he could see Lazarus far off in Abraham's bosom and, Abraham, and Lazarus was at peace and at rest in Abraham's bosom my my friend, he didn't have much on this in this earth, my friend, but oh, what he received when he left this earth. The angels became his pallbearers and carried him to the Abraham's bosom to where he'd be peace and rest forevermore and forever rest in the presence of God and the holy angels. My friend, today, let's give God some praise. Let's give him some glory if we've been saved and we know we are saved. Let's give him some praise honor and glory give all the credit to him and not credit herself for nothing because it because his love his mercy he saved us we didn't save him but he saved us that we wouldn't have to go to that lake of fire called hell where the rich man oh, lifted up his eyes and don't never let nobody 
tell, tell you or convince us that hell is not real. My friend, it is real and very real. And it is real today. If we could talk to Lazarus, he would tell us to not come to this place. But let us go on. Read this a little farther. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good receiveth thy good thing and, and likewise latter evil thing but now he is comforted and thou art tormented what is he talking about here he said evil thing he was treated bad he was treated evil people were bad to him that treated him evil my friend but he he gained that heavenly home when the Abra angel carried him to abraham's bosom he received my friend eternal life to never suffer again my friend he'll never be hungry anymore my friend today but rejoice in the presence of god and forevermore my friend today yes hell is real it, it is real as real can be also heaven is real but my friend we have to go through and by the lord jesus christ he is the way and the only way we'll ever get to heaven my friend there's no other way my friend to get there except through and by the lord jesus christ that gave his life and shed his blood on calvary cross for the atonement of our sins that will wash our sins away to never be remembered no more against us. But the rich man knew what he had done. He had all his senses and he could remember he still knew who Abraham was. Now that's what he goes on to say. He knew who Lazarus was. Verse 26 And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. It's fixing a way that you can cross back and forth because they could. They would leave because they loved you. They would leave heaven to try to help you, but it's too late now. You cannot be helped anymore. Therefore, he fixed it to no one can pass back and forth across that great gulf. My friend, what's that a saying? Once a person is hell, he's going to remain in hell. My friend, he's going to be tormented day and night forever and ever because he's died lost without God. He didn't have no love for his fellow man. Those that need, that had, had needed help along the way, they he turned them away. People doing the same thing today I can't point my finger at no man and neither will I point my finger at a man and tell him he, they're going to hell because only God knows if I did I'd be judging them but they are in the hands of a true and just and living God and he will control those things when time comes but let us be sure we are saved by the grace of God and if we are saved then we are richer than the richest man on this earth because because money, gold and silver, did not save us. But we are saved through his mercy and his love, his great love, when he forgave us our sins and made us his own. He came into our heart and supped with us, and we supped with him, and we became a living soul. Twenty-seven, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place. Also already noticed back in 27 that I just read the word father, and fathers are the little ones. That means the earth daddy and the earth mama. This is what he's talking about. For I have five, said, then he said, I pray thee, there, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, my to his daddy's house. For I have five brethren, that they, he may testify unto them, lest they also come into 
This place I've torn me in, into the hell where he was, where the rich man was. My friend, yes, hell is the real place, and it's real hot. And my friend, he knows it is now. And my friend, the day's coming. Those that reject him and say no to him, and they don't need need him anymore, because they're going to find out also how hot hell is really going to be. They'll know then, it's never, never hearsay, it is true word of God spoken from the mouth of the Lord Jesus when he walked down here and taught us and give us instructions how for heaven to be our home. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Now you see, again, here Lazarus was still a begging for on behalf, not only for himself. He's begging for his five brethren, and we are part of those five brethren today. He was a talking to my friend. I'm so thankful today that God reached down and saved our soul when we were lost in sin. I didn't even know, realize he existed. We were so wrapped up in the world, but thank God for his drawing power that drawed us. He came to us and drawed us to understand that we were lost and need of a Savior. And he drawed us. He led us to him. We became saved, my friend, by believing in him, the Lord Jesus Christ, and being baptized in his blood, my friend, today. Therefore, let us rejoice and give God, glorify God because it's him that saved us, not what we own or have in our possession but his great love and mercy 31 and he said unto him if they hear not Moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead my friend He's saying here, they've already heard of the gospel, my friend. No matter how much they've had the choice, and it's up to them to make the right choice, or they will come to this place because there are only two choices. There's one good choice, and it'll take us home to glory one day after a while, and it's only one bad choice. That bad choice will take a person as straight to hell as they can go to that lake of fire. I burn with brimstone, my friend, and the fire will never be quenched. It will never be put out. Therefore, my friend, today, if you're not, if you're still lost, I pray today, the day will be the day you get saved and stop following Jesus. S T A R T. Start following Jesus, and if you straight away come back to Him and get on the old path that we can rejoice together and share the gospel to the lost and dying world, to our brothers and sisters, our family, our friends, our neighbors, that's dying lost without God and needing the help of a Savior. And may, many have never told them. And a lot of the day, today, a lot of preachers, people get mad at me for mentioning preachers so much, but many of them won't tell the truth of the matter. They want to sugarcoat it and smooth it over, make it sound easy, and they don't want to mention the word hell. They're afraid to offend someone. My friend, we're not supposed to be afraid, but we just preach the God, the gospel of God, instant in season, out of season, with all long doctrine and supper. My friend, that someone will come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved before it's too late. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you with a thankful heart to thank you for many blessings and thank you for the other day that you have given us to sit down and get in your words for just a little while. And I thank you, Lord, and I praise you for the words you give me today. And Lord, I pray, Lord, they will accomplish where you sin. And you already said and stated your word will not return void. And I believe that and I stand on that today. And I pray, oh Lord, again, you'll fill the soul, the heart with your Holy Spirit, that we all rejoice together knowing that we have been saved by the grace of God. 
and ready to go home in the morning, not of own, own works, but what you did for us, uh, and draw us closer to you, and to obey it, more desire to obey your word and your gospel. And now, Lord, we pray for those lost and undone, that you draw them to, to you, and I, I pray for those that straight away you draw them back, because, Lord, we don't want, don't, don't want to leave this world unprepared to meet you, for because however they leave this world, that's the way they'll stand before you on the great judgment day that's sure coming. And I, and I pray, O oh Lord, for those sick and un, uh, in the body and health, Lord. I pray you reach down, touch, and deliver, and set free if it be your will. But if it's not your will, then be healed in this life. Lord, I pray you let them be a witness to those around them that they can see their faithfulness in you, Lord. And I pray, oh Lord, today, I pray for those one more time that you save someone today before they sleep tonight, before the day's end, because tomorrow might never, never come. And Lord, we'll be listening for you to call her name and when you call her name and we can hear you say uh, well done my good and faithful servant enter into the joys of the Lord and Lord when we get there we can bow our heads and step aside and give you all the praise and honor and glory uh, and praise you first and most of all because you are our savior you are the one that saved us we didn't save you but you saved us uh, and Lord when we get there we'll have all the time we need uh, we can have forever uh, when we've been there 10 million years uh, there'll still be 10 million more to go uh, for we'll have all the time we need uh, because it is forever uh, we can tell and sing the old story uh, how we were saved by grace uh, and we can Tell, sing a song how and tell how you gave your life on the cross for us uh, and we can join the holy angels uh, and those that's gone on before that are waiting for our coming where we give you the praise and glory forevermore these things we ask in the lovely name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and amen and thank you Father one more time for your love and your mercy